All right. It's time to escape. Water just keeps pouring in through the window. It's like a waterfall. I don't think shoving something in the window is going to stop some water. In other words, if I don't want to die, I need to find a way out of this room. I have to figure this out. At the table, water is pouring onto it like a little waterfall. I don't see anything useful there. Beep, beep. It's a pipe. I know. I'll crawl into the pipe and find a way out. That is an awfully tiny pipe to try to crawl through. There's nobody here to make fun of my lame jokes. Man, this sucks. What do we got here? About items. During an escape, investigating certain parts of the room will allow you to obtain items. Once you've tamed an item, you'll be able to go to the item screen. Touching L on the top left will take you to the item screen. While on the item screen, you'll be able to investigate, hold, and combine items that you found. If you want to investigate an item you found, touch the icon for that item in the item screen. And then touch search on the top right corner of the bottom screen. Wow, okay. <coughs> So we got some red triangles and blue triangles. Awesome. Can I... Uh, wait. Wait. There we go. Noob's got a red triangle and empty red triangle and a blue triangle and empty blue triangle and, and blue. Yeah. Wait. Oh. Bow. Hello. Touching an item while on the item screen will select that item. While an item is selected, touching L will return you to the room and investigation screen. If you look down at the bottom left corner of the bottom screen, you should see the icon. This shows that you're holding the item. If you hold an item while investigating the room, you may trigger a reaction. Investigate suspicious areas with different items and see if anything happens. Alright. Pressing up on the control pad will select another item for you to hold. I don't have any idea what that is. Just tell them next to the sink. Well, time to wash that. Does it seem like there's anything hidden on the sink? This is the only drain in the room. I don't think it's gonna work right now. Picture frame. Wait, I can combine? No, all right. Mm -hmm. An old picture frame. There's a picture of a ship in it. There's screws keeping back on. Ah, gotcha. Okay. There's nothing on the top of the shelf. Bolton board. There's nothing on it now. This is a middle one. This is, as far as I can tell, holes attached to the bed. Anything else? Ah. Uh, okay. What about the floor? Spare simple chairs next to the table. Or is already up to the chair. Oh, stove. This is the door to the stove. Well, it opens easily enough. Sure, the door is to get out of here was that easy to open. Hey, a screwdriver. All right. Combined with the picture frame. Well, the screwdriver got the screws off easily enough. And here's the picture. Okay, let me orient this correctly. Oh. So seven, four, six, three. Gotcha. Ooh. Combining items. If you take two items you found and combine them, they may turn into something else. To do this, select an item on the screen and touch the on the top part of the bottom screen. Then select the second item by touching and touch combining. The two items can be combined or receive a new item. Cannot be combined, nothing will happen. Screwdriver, huh? Wonder why that's here. Convenience. This is totally a stove. Nothing inside though. Not anymore. Oh, let's see if there's anything in here. Huh? Looks like there is. Hooray, uh key? Yeah, there's a little blue key in the bottom of the spot. Odd. Awesome. Looking at a pot lid. Sweet. It's an old pot on top of the stove. Nothing in here. Alright. Let's get out of this crazy place. So. No dice. It's locked tight. 
and see if there's anything in the keyhole. Uh, looks like I gotta put the key in the keyhole in order to enter a number. Oh, done. All right, let's see what happens. I put this blue key in the keyhole, and nothing. Guess I'm gonna need some sort of code. Mini games. During an escape, your investigation may trigger one of several mini games. Sweet. All operations for the mini games are done by touching the bottom screen. Some mini games will require you to manipulate something, while others will only require you to apply the right object to touch the right thing. Operation instructions. Touching the dial will cause it to move to the next number. Enter four numbers this way, and then touch the key. If the numbers are correct, it will unlock. Seven, four, six, three. Okay. Damn it. Open, you stupid thing. I don't think it's gonna open if I walk it on the wall a couple of times. Might make me feel better. Not gonna help, though. Alright, Junpei, don't freak out. Keep it cool and look around for some more clues. Nice. Seven, four, six, three. No. I'm gonna have to find the right four numbers. All right, let's give this another try. Oh, poops. Ugh, come on. Seven, five, six, four. Parts, oh well. I'll keep looking around. Briefcase won't open. I need to put it in the right security code. Yeah, you do. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Uh, I can't see the bottom of the ladder. Oh man, the water's already up to the bottom of the bed. Gotta hurry this up. It's a blue briefcase on top of the bed. I can keep looking until the cows come home. I'm gonna find up here is that pillow. Damn it. Is there anything else I can use? There's a pipe on the other end of the bed. There's nothing up top. Okay. What's this? What? A red key. Interesting. Oh, wait a second. Junpei grabbed the key and shoved it into his pocket. He intended to leave immediately, but something stopped him. His reflection stared back at him from the mirror, but he had scarcely recognized himself. What's up with my face? His confusion was well justified. His face was drawn and pale, and a dark circle under his eyes make him look as though he was nearly dead. Man, what the hell happened to me? How did I end up here? Even as he said it, something in his mind opened, and a memory bobbed to the surface. It was the last thing Junpei remembered before waking up in the strange room. It was past midnight when he came home. Junpei shuffled up the stairs and opened the door to apartment 201. Inside was his apartment, a small one-bedroom affair that ran him about 6.30 a month. Jeez. He moved into it when he entered college, and so far he'd been there for three years and seven months. He stepped inside and turned on the lights. The fluorescent lights on the ceiling blinked and flickered slowly to, slowly to life, as if waking from a deep slumber. The cold light illuminated the landscape he'd come home to so many times before. Everything was as he'd left it. The magazines piled up in the corner, the textbooks collecting dust, CD cases <laughs> covering the floor, the jeans and t-shirt he'd worn the day before, then tossed onto the, onto the floor. There was one thing that didn't belong, however. Was it corporal rape? There was a breeze. Breaths of cold night air wafted into his apartment, carrying the smells of autumn with him. The white curtain trimming his window swayed gently in the wind. Huh, that's weird. Did I leave that open? Junpei walked toward the window, trying to remember if he'd close it or not before he left. One of the panes was hanging open. He stuck his head out and looked around. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary. 
Junpei shrugged. He must have just left it open earlier. He closed the window. And then it happened. What an asshole. Junpei turned and found himself face to face with a man dressed all in black. The man wore a deep hood and a bulky gas mask. His face was entirely hidden. Could have been a woman then. Junpei tried to scream. All he could manage was a strangled croak. He tried to step toward the man, but his legs could no longer support his weight. Junpei collapsed to the floor, a crumpled heap of limbs like a discarded puppet. Too late, he noticed the white smoke that was quickly filling his apartment. A small object, shaped distressingly like a grenade, sat on the floor in front of his face, hissing. The white smoke poured out of it at an incredible rate. And the smoke had grown so thick that the details of Junpei's apartment began to fade into a white haze. The white haze. He could feel his mind begin to fade as well. A white haze that was not the smoke creeping into the edge of his vision. Well. Consider this a privilege. You have been chosen. A rasping voice warmed its way out of the gas mask. It was cold and harsh and distorted in some way Jupe couldn't put his finger on. You're going to participate in a game. The nonary game. It is a game where you put your life on the line. That doesn't sound very awesome at all. That was the last thing Junpei remembered. The white smoke overpowered him. The masked man faded from his vision, and he felt his consciousness fall away into the white mist. That's right. The guy with the gas mask. The son of a bitch must have taken me here. As to who the man was, or might have been, Junpei had no idea. Indeed, he wasn't sure that his assailant had been a man. The voice had been cold and mechanical, likely passed through a voice changer, and the body had been covered in a thick cloak. Who was this man in the mask? You have been chosen. Junpei remembered that much, but... What might it mean? That was beyond him. Junpei had no idea where he was, or why he was there. There was only one thing from his memory that seemed important. You are going to participate in a game. The Nonary Game. It is a game where you'll put your life on the line. The Nonary Game, huh? The hell is a Nonary Game? Oh! With a yell, Junpei drove his fist into the mirror. 